Hello, family, and welcome to our boring meditation stuff, the conversation about meditation and crippling anxiety. <laughs> um, I decided while it's on my mind, I'm going to talk about uh, this hypo hypothesis. I, I don't know what uh, you call this. Um, silly idea, I think. Um, something I wrote down at one point. This idea that the Buddha was an alien. Um, so if you first suspend disbelief, I suppose, um, assume that there's such a person as the Buddha, uh, and specifically such a person as Gautam Buddha, um, the Buddha who was supposedly alive 2,500 years ago. Um, now suspend disbelief about aliens. So uh, maybe there are aliens, right? And who knows, maybe they're even interested in us uh, human beings for some reason. Now, I was mentioning this idea of the, um, uh, the Kard Kardashev scale and the Kurzgesagt video about the Kardashev scale and the scale of alien civilizations, that they would get bigger and bigger and they would leave bigger evidence of themselves. Um, and I think that it's fair to say that we know so little about the universe and so little about energy for that matter. The, the scale sort of depends on this idea that you're constantly extracting more energy, which um, at human scales we tend to do uh, by building bigger and bigger things. Um, but uh, perhaps there are other ways. Um, this idea is essentially, if you leave the Buddha out for a moment, um, if you try to uh, answer this question, um, so they they say these these two things in the video that I linked in the the previous um, conversation about um, if there was an alien civilization that reached level three, which is halfway through the levels, uh, give or take. Um, but still pretty big. They're, they're harnessing uh, the power of the solar system and, um, and beyond that. If you, if you had an alien civilization like that around, um, that they would leave these unmistakable artifacts, right? Like you would know that, uh, that such an alien civilization exists or had existed, um, sort of like the pyramids. They would leave something big behind. Um, and then later on in the video, the second thing they say is maybe we've got it all wrong. <laughs> and I think that likely they do. Um, now, if you imagine an alien civilization which has grown to a harness massive amounts of energy and do these sort of magical things, build huge civilizations, grow, expand, terraform worlds, um, build new homes for themselves in multiple places so that uh, if you imagine human beings growing to that size, for instance, when the earth expires and our sun expires, we would live somewhere else. We would have made it, uh, you know, across the ocean of space to a new safe home where our species could continue in this kind of classic biological view of the world where like, oh, the species, it wants to keep perpetuating itself through sex um, kind of thing. Now, if you imagine that you have an alien species that advanced, that they can do this, um, it seems likely that they'd probably break out of this kind of self-perpetuation sex mold that, uh, that animals on earth subscribe to um, at our like relatively highly related level of evolution, right? It's almost, uh, it almost goes without saying that animals on planet Earth all have like a relatively aligned level of evolution at the moment because we're all on the same planet. We all have to endure the same environment. Um, if you have a higher level uh, of alien, then presumably those aliens would go out of their way not to be detected. You don't really, you don't necessarily want 
if you're going to communicate with them at all. Um, if you're going to communicate with the other creatures in the universe, you don't necessarily want them getting too excited about the fact that you're there. It's kind of like, um, and I'll refrain from too many of these like human beings and other stupider creatures analogies, but um, like bugs and, uh, and other mammals and lizards, right? If you sit still and try not to make a big scene, they don't get freaked out or not as much. And it would probably be the same with fancier, more advanced aliens that they would be like, oh, okay, don't like, don't freak out the colony of humans, right? Like don't make them obsessed with the idea that there's an alien out there, hide. Um, either be invisible or be effectively invisible. So that's sort of um, the first idea is that the aliens would probably not leave any kind of artifact behind. They wouldn't leave artifacts that we could see um, and they certainly wouldn't make themselves very present um, on purpose. And then the second idea sort of hinges on that, which is that, okay, the aliens want to talk to us, but they don't want to freak us out and they don't want us to feel scared or anything. Um, and they, they want to do it in a way that we will accept, right? Uh, so, okay, these, <clears throat> these hairless monkeys on earth, um, they have some ideas and then they have some preconceptions that we need to sort of align with. So let's do that. Let's align with the, the human's preconceptions about what the universe looks like, how it works, all that sort of thing. Um, and so why not? Like, why not create or uh, simulate? I don't know how you would uh, necessarily do this, but you have probably the power at that stage to uh, put a human looking creature on earth, right? And let's say that's Gautam Buddha. Oh, okay, yeah. So he, um, he shows up and he seems to have all the important worldly knowledge uh, and he conveys it to the humans, but he doesn't do it in any sort of terrifying and scary way, right? He doesn't do it with telepathy, which like presumably the aliens might be capable of. Um, he doesn't do it with magic powers. He just does it by talking. Oh, humans, they're pretty okay with talking. Yeah, okay, we'll have this one, like the guy that we send, the guy or the girl, I mean, I'm sure it doesn't matter which one it is, if they even have sexes anymore, these aliens. Um, the thing that, the one of us that we send to the earth and who's going to talk to all the humans, um, He'll just, he'll just do it with regular old speech, regular old whatever language they use. Magadi, cool, good. <laughs> Pali, whatever, Pali Vasa. Um, we'll throw, yeah, sure, he knows all of those. How about that? Um, he'll just wander the countryside and talk. And what does he tell people to do? Uh, he tells people to do the exact opposite of what our preconception of what aliens would do. They, oh, the aliens, they'll build these big spaceships and they'll have such cool technology and lasers. Or maybe the aliens have mastered uh, this capacity for self-mastery. Um, and they work doggedly at this activity until they've perfected it. And um, the third component of this is actually uh, this idea that we sort of have a scale for how evolved even people are, right? But certainly beings on earth. And on that scale, we put violence pretty low. We don't, we don't think much of that. We don't think much of um, the violence of chimpanzees. We don't think much of the violence of human beings. Um, we think that it's kind of a lowly state to be in. And so it's pretty unlikely that an advanced alien race has any interest in violence. They've probably also reached this conclusion. It seems like uh, it's 
quite a natural conclusion to reach that violence is pretty unproductive. It hurts uh, other sentient creatures that have the capacity for feeling things. So maybe violence bad. Uh, okay. Uh, and then if not violence, then what? Oh, these other things. <laughs> uh, maybe just um, gentleness and compassion and um, love. This sort of selfless love, um, which is quite a fancy kind of love. Um, it has nothing to do with the sort of sexual love, uh, which can often come paired with violence, right? So um, it's very likely that this alien who comes to Earth and talks the humans through their problems, uh, he's probably not really big on sex. Maybe he's never even done it, or maybe just did it once or twice, and then he's like, nope, now it's time to go be a, a celibate uh, talker <laughs> and sell people on this idea of self-exploration. Um, and so if we have this, this scale, this evolutionary scale already, and if we put certain people at the, the end of the evolutionary scale, um, let's say here is actually uh, the low end of the evolutionary scale. So we have like the creatures that are um, they're suffering all the time and they're hurting each other all the time. And then you have like a progression, right? And then somewhere along the way, we see ourselves emerge, ourselves. Uh, like the idea of sapiens, homo sapiens, and the potential violence that we were engaged in at that time, right? Potentially, uh, we don't know so much about it, but we know that we weren't we were hardly uh, like a super peace loving species at that stage. And then you progress and you progress and you get through like big genocides and the world wars and all of that stuff. And then you get to where we are now, where there's still violence. There's still, still some measure of violence. There's still some measure of, of ugliness, craving, greed, anger, um, all that stuff. And if you continue along the spectrum, those things, go away, they get diminished. And human beings become better, right, at the stuff that we think is important, intelligence, rationality, love, again, selfless love, um, a service to our other fellow humans, all of those sorts of things. Um, it doesn't really have anything to do with any political ideology or any sort of um, base philosophy. It's just sort of your behavior in any given moment, right? So from one moment to the next moment, in one moment, um, if I'm exhibiting these negative behaviors, uh, I have obviously, I haven't really um, kind of cleaned up the, the body and the consciousness. Um, and that is what Buddha the alien was trying to teach, was that, oh, you can do this. You can actually clean yourself up so that you stop hurting people. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> is it is this a good idea? I have no idea, honestly. Um, I think that uh, I think that it's worth going through these silly little thought exercises about oh, okay, the teachers of meditation, be it the Buddha or uh, Christ or um, Ramana Maharshi, anyone, right? Um, Lao Tzu, whoever they are who were they exactly? Um, and to examine that under a, a bit critically and then kind of in these expansive, like thought exercise, goofy thought exercise kind of ways, right? Um, the position that we've put specifically Gautam Buddha, right? Um, at this point, that guy is, uh, so he's become a statue that you put in your bathroom or that you see in a spa or like maybe a hotel. Um, so that's a, that's a weird thing to do with the, the alien that was sent to, I'm just kidding. Um, but I mean, it's, a, it's sort of a weird position, right? For a saint. Um, like you don't see Christ or Lao Tzu uh, ever put in this position. Um, and then you also have this other strange association uh, with Gautam Buddha, which is uh, drugs. Um, so whatever you may feel about who Gautam Buddha 
may have been if he existed um, or wasn't, his recorded speech, as best we have it, pretty thoroughly goes into the idea that he abhorred intoxicants and strictly recommended that you do not do them. He wasn't about to uh, force you not to do them, but, and that's the thing is he never forces anybody to do anything in the stories, right? It's always just, here are my strong recommendations over and over again. And they're very simple and they're very easy to understand. Everyone understands my recommendations and I just keep recommending them, recommending them. Um, or teaching, right? Teaching, 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 the same thing over and over again. Um, but uh, somehow these, these ideas have been um, much like our ideas about aliens, actually. They've sort of been squished into this framework that we have for ourselves, right? So we have this um, available framework, which is materialism and our own idea of peace. Uh, so, okay, peace and calm, tranquility. What do those things feel like? Well, the highest level of peace, the highest level of tranquility that I have felt must be the highest level of tranquility that there is. And like, I feel that when I go to the spa. So in the spa, that's where we'll put the Buddha statue. It's a little silly. Um, and it's, it's pretty, uh, it's very, it's very strangely, um, species grade egocentric, right? To formulate these ideas around our current way of thinking and formulate these ideas about possibility around our current state to kind of constantly reframe everything in terms of like, oh, okay, humans, like, if there's more, if there's more to it, it must look more like this, right? Um, rather than being something completely different. Um, so I think that uh, if you are thinking about the Buddha, 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 um, as as a meditation teacher, that you should really kind of clean the slate on who that person was, or maybe who they had the potential to be. They this man doesn't need to be an alien. That's just goofy thought um, experiments. But um, he's probably also not like the statue in the bathroom <laughs> over your toilet uh, or this kind of psychedelic um, acid trip and uh, marijuana adjacent associated image that we have now of like consciousness expansion and um, being one with the universe and all of that sort of crap. Uh, it was probably it was probably the case if he existed that he was someone else entirely, right? Um, and it is very possible to read the things that it is understood that he said if you want to explore the idea of Gautam Buddha as a meditation teacher, um, which as far as the record shows, that's all he was, right? Uh, there is nothing else to it. Um, so he's either teaching you to meditate or teaching you how to get ready to meditate. Um, but even that, there's, there's not a whole lot there. It's basically like, be nice to your family. Okay, now sit down cross-legged and close your eyes. <laughs> um, Okay, so that is, uh, that is my long and goofy thought process on maybe the Buddha was an alien. Uh, Three-step um, thought exercise. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I, uh, I also hope that you're having an okay Wednesday, and I hope that you have a good rest of your week, and I will talk to you again tomorrow. Goodbye, everybody.